Welcome to our Five on Five. We're pleased to welcome back Oregon Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum. Good to see you. Great to be back. Thank you Thanks, so much Greg. for being here. So it's been a very busy couple months for you. Let me first talk about and ask you about uh, Governor Kitzhaber and First Lady Sylvia Hayes. Your office has been very involved in that. Uh, right. What is the status of that investigation? Are you currently investigating them? The current status is that we are not investigating them at the moment. We have temporarily deferred our investigation at the request of the United States Attorney's Office and the FBI. So it is in the federal hands for now, but when they conclude their investigation, they have agreed to uh, provide us with their report, at which time we'll review it, determine whether there are state law violations, and proceed at that point. We don't know when that will be. Certainly. Okay, so you're, you've also been very involved with Governor Brown and the legislature uh, this session. What, what are you working on with the legislature right now? We have a very robust uh, legislative agenda at the Department of Justice. Of course, our budget is very important, and we have a couple of asks that are particularly important. One is to continue to uh, establish a new uh, great child support services uh, collection program. We collect a million dollars a day here in Oregon for child support to put food wow. on the table and clothes on the backs. Number. It's a big number. Uh, hundreds of thousands of, of kids and families are served by our largest division, the Child Support Division. In fact, we have an office right here in Medford, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I just visited with them today. So that's a really important project. Another is I'm very hopeful about getting a statewide elder abuse resource prosecutor. That's right. I did read um, that. That's a big issue in our state. You know, we're really just at the ground floor in realizing the extent of the problem of our seniors and how easy it is to scam them, how much advantage uh, is taken of them, unfortunately even by family sometimes. It's, it's really a, a tragedy when that occurs, but we need to have more help to local law enforcement and district attorneys, and so we're very hopeful for getting a prosecutor to assist there. We also have a robust uh, package of bills, particularly focused on privacy issues. We have a sexual assault uh, campus privacy uh, issue. I'm sure you've heard that there's kind of an epidemic of campus sexual assault. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that there's so little reporting, it, it seems, is that when a, a student or young person has been assaulted, they go to a, a victim advocate, the, there's no confidentiality for that conversation. And the information that they provide can be given. In fact, it has to be given under Title IX, unless there's a state law preventing it for the uh, administrative processes on campus. So we have a bill that would make those conversations private, and that's the way it should be, uh, so that our young people can, uh, in these really tough moments in their mm -hmm. lives, be able to go to somebody and know that they have privacy in that communication. So that's Certainly. really important. Uh, we also have a uh, K through 12 student privacy bill that has to do with these ed tech companies that now work with the schools and with teachers and provide technology, which is great, to help with tests, to help with learning. But unfortunately, at the moment, there's not enough uh, certainty that that information that they obtain, that very personal information about our students, uh, be it their personal social security number, how they did on a test, what problems they're having in school, that that information is going to remain private and not mm -hmm. be sold or, or somehow uh, marketed to a third party. And this would make that illegal, essentially. The only purpose for which that information could be used would be the ones that they're there for in the first place, educational purposes. So that's a really important bill. Yeah, uh, that's and certainly make, a that's lot of bills to be considered. You guys are yeah. very Those active. are just a couple. Yeah, I, know, right? I could go on. <laughs> it's okay. We only have five minutes. Right. You're, you're doing wonderfully. So let me ask you, though. You did, uh, your office filed a suit against a white city company for a nationwide subscription scam. It was sophisticated. Now, how do you track criminal activity like this, and, and how have you worked with other attorney generals from other states in this one? Well, we have multi-state investigations all the time, but this is one that's taken place right here in Oregon. Mm -hmm. So this actually, uh, we have joined in with New York and a couple of other states, but we are taking the lead on this particular case because it's, as I said, right here, in fact, close to right in the Rogue, Med, Valley. Right in the Rogue yeah. Valley. And unfortunately, what it turns out is that millions of dollars have been taken from people who thought they were getting these great deals from these companies that are headquartered here in White City for magazine subscription, other types of subscriptions. Basically a scam whereby people thought they were getting the best prices available, and it turned out they weren't. Hmm. Fascinating. Well, thank you so much for stopping by and telling Absolutely. us about it. Appreciate it. Good seeing you. Sure. Again. Good to see you. All right. Stay with us. We'll be right back.